Hello everyone, welcome to another episode on the Goddess Cave. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to season three. Let's get real in the cave. So today, um, I just want to just kind of do like a part two to the journey episode that I recorded in season one. I'm pretty sure that it was, uh, let me pull it up, episode 15, the season one, the journey. This is the journey part two. Um, basically... Well, I feel like your journey pretty much changes through every year, every month, every week. It's something that you just kind of get a change of perspective about things. Um, Some things you might manifest to create certain lessons for yourself or, I don't know, just things may happen to you or just life is life. Life be lifing. And I feel like... With therapy, working through therapy, and just becoming more persistent, or actually just, I feel like 2022 has been the year of letting go of my ego. I feel like when I first started this podcast, I believe and I know that I was really in my ego as far as self-love, and I feel like my overall perspective about self-love has changed, um... It's so easy to get caught up into the social norms of whatever journey that you're going along. Of course, we all look up to people to see, okay, this inspired me to jump into this. This inspired me to jump into that. So, like, of course, we all see the glitz and glam about healing and the journey. But what you don't really understand is that, like, a lot of these things out in the world is just, like, cover-ups, okay? So, it's nothing wrong with treating yourself, but like from what I know <laughs> about myself is I've always had a shout out to Natalie. I always had um a retail therapy thing. Um that was like a release for me because I wasn't really going out, so I could shop. That was like my whole social time. Um and like I said the ego part of me was like this person who wants to come out into the world and be this person, attract certain things. But at the same time, it's like at this, it's like at the same time, I'm still me. You know what I'm saying? The ego just wants to be a part of things and be accepted. And that's that part that I was trying to embrace because I cocooned myself. I kind of like use my parents to say, you know, at a certain point in time, you have to say, okay, this happened to me, but at this point in time, as you're an adult, you have the control to say, I'm going to mold my life in such a way that I will get what I want using whatever resources or beliefs that you have, um, getting and staying grounded in that, which is whatever, if it's spiritual for you, if you're a Christian, whatever your religion is, um, Whatever that you find that you feel that will help you get those healthy tools, okay, guess key, and healthy perspective to get to that evolved version of yourself. So, it's just all a learning curve. And when I look at things in hindsight, like, I feel like this year I had to break that ego down. But because I'm a really emotional person, I really didn't recognize that it was ego driven. Now, I'm not saying like certain goals that I have for myself was not pure because they most definitely were pure things that I've been wanting for my whole life. I just feel like the intention was pure, but the way I was going about it because I'm in a self-defensive mode. Um, self-love is can be selfish, but you have to be able to monitor in what ways are you changing narratives to not be healthy. So, for example, if there's nothing wrong with you going out and buying yourself things or treating yourself out to eat, but at the same time, you have to know that don't get so caught up on this escapism of, I don't know, the emotional rush that you get from and the endorphins from getting this release of self-love, quote, quote, the worldly social aspect of self-love to put yourself in debt (laughs) um that is the biggest thing because that's what happened to me 
alongside me having these major life-changing goals of getting my own place and spending all my resources to make this happen. Thank God I'm able to do that. But you don't notice how those small things and the end is like, ah, now when life happens and, you know, you have normal life things, you might get a flat tire, you may have to, I don't know, have some type of natural disaster or whatever happening and you don't notice how your I don't know how you say it uh, I want that not preparation but uh what is the word what is the word what is it what is it what is it moderation is key I think we lose sight of that because everyone else is doing those things and it's a wonderful thing to show people hey This is what I do for self-love. This is what makes me feel good. But what about your behind the scenes? You know, don't get so caught up in. And that's what I'm learning for myself. Don't get so caught up in showing you all how to love yourself. Because first of all, I'm doing it for me. But I also want to show you guys there's a healthier way to do things. There's a healthier way to heal. But I had to learn that there's error in certain things, you know, um, so let's just break stuff down. So from last year, my birthday, I had a really simple birthday, uh, just a regular picnic. Um, that's around the time when I was coming off of injury. I had just plummeted myself into work and trying to get those financial bills from my surgery under control, making sure I have what I need to move in to be able to sustain myself for a period of time while I'm still, you know, spending money here and there to make my home a home. But child, somewhere along the way, you know, I've always loved the ambiance of creating a zen environment and I, I environment is everything for me. And I just wanted things to be so perfect, but child, you're spending money, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, okay, you still have bills to come. Now, I had about six months of rent saved up, which was a wonderful thing, which is why I was able to do those things. But at the same time, because I'm like, oh, Ebony, you can post this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Because I'm having all these visions that are finally coming to fruition, but you're just figuring out, like, take your time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take your time. There's no rush of things. And I got lost there. I literally went, boop, boop. Because it was like, now I have this freedom, if you want to call it that. To do all these things, but at the same time, I wasn't really doing nothing else besides going shopping. Creating my home. Because this is a dream come true, you know what I'm saying? But, (laughs) sis, wait a minute. You know, just because the next check coming, you don't know what things that you have no control over. And then that created depression. You know? Um, I stopped posting, like, as much besides other things that I had going in my life personally but the main thing was really because it was revealed to me how I was on this roller coaster or this emotional high from okay so this is this is my thing my birthday coming up right I will be planning all of these things of what I want to do I'm excited I'm this and I'm that I'm this and I'm that did all this stuff birthday comes cool cool day but then it's like once that day comes Then it's just like, okay, back to reality. Then you got Christmas, and you're preparing for Christmas because I'm a holiday person, and I love everything about holidays. Then holidays over, and it's like, okay. So every time there's a major event, especially when it comes to holidays and birthdays, that's when those highs come in, you know? And that will be that push that I need. But then after a while, you know, you have that break of holidays and stuff like that, and it's like... (sighs) All the things that you wished and prayed for have passed, and now what? You just got bills in life, regular, everyday things, you know? And if you got used to being in your home, and it's not as exciting, you know what I'm saying? Because you've got over those uh, new first apartment, new year, new me jitters. As we all go through that whole new year, new me, I'm going to do this gym routine and da-da-da-da-da. Same thing. Um, Life click. Okay, and then I had health situations going on, and I'm back to this like 
gaining my footing type of thing. But because the footing that I had was all an ego, I couldn't, that wasn't stable, you know, because I was only based off of goals, okay? I'm going to just like, hold on. Let me search up the word because I want to, this is a really great example of what I've been doing. Okay, so escapism, the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities, especially by seeking entertainment or engaging in a fantasy. Now, if you are an overthinker, if you are a really innovative person, I can say like holidays, birthdays, and just big events, I go all out, you know? And then it's like, it gives me a release to where I don't have to focus on anything that I have personally going on. So instead of focusing on, okay, Ebony, the goal that I originally had before I moved into my home was, okay, Ebony... Make sure you have that month put away. Now play. It was more so get this, get this. Okay, but now I got to get this podcast studio. But then you want to do all this zen and you want to create this. You want to create things take time. But the joy and just, you know, getting those things brought so much joy and a high that I just was like, okay. Then when you have financial situations coming along to where you can't perform and you're pay or financially is going down it's like oh (laughs) this is what real life looks like and I feel like when I had that aha moment that Ebony chill out you know I didn't take heed to it you know what I'm saying I'm busy trying to do too many things at once because I'm in this fantasy and this is what's giving me a high that I can't get any footing if that makes any sense So my journey thus far has been like breaking my ego down, humbling myself because I'm getting lessons through the things that I've been through versus if I or whether I've created them for myself by just manifesting that energy towards me or I don't know. I feel like it's just been like a lot of in my head type of thing because it's like after a while, you know how you have a party and then, you know, you're enjoying the party and after a while, it's like everybody goes home and it's like quiet. Like, oh, you're dealing with yourself now. You know what I'm saying? And that's basically like what happened. And then I didn't notice how it's so crazy to where you pray for something but you just have no control on how God is going to answer that prayer. Because he knows you and he knows what really will get through to you. Because, like, it's just, like, when I look back on it in hindsight, it's like, there's certain things that I was like, I got that lesson then, but it didn't stick. So it's like, okay, break it down some more. Break you down some more until you can fully understand, you know what I'm saying, what the big picture is. Because I prayed for some things that... (sighs) The pure heart that I prayed for to remain could not coincide with that ego that I had been living off of, you know? This whole, I don't care about this, put me first. It's really confusing, you know? Everyone goes on their own journey of self-love and, you know, first of all, everything ain't what it seems, you know what I'm saying? It feels good when, you know, you see people going out and doing things on their own. But at the same time, being on those picnics by myself, it was kind of like, okay, you still would want some company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's good. Cool. After a while, those things get old. You know what I'm saying? Because in your heart of hearts, you know that you still want companionship or you still want a family or you still want certain things. But because you've been either hurt, disappointed, I don't know, whatever it is, it made you say, I'm going to focus on me. That's why I had to say, like, I had to re, I had to realize, like, okay, what made me choose to say, I'm going to put me first? It wasn't just because I'm embracing this new thing. It was because it was a reaction. 
reactions tend to be negative, you know what I'm saying? And a response is healthy. So that's what it was. It was reactions typically are just quick like that. You don't really think about it. You don't process it. Responses take some time, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I was in a reaction. But it was a long reaction. But it was a feel-good reaction. That's why it's always good to either journal or... Like I said, therapy is really doing a really good job for me. Um, the more that I'm sitting and recognizing and seeing errors and... I don't know if I would say just like sitting with those things, but also appreciating those things because it's like, okay, the next time things come around, you know that you always have an out. There's always been opportunities for outs for me to say, okay, Ebony, here's your moment to reevaluate. Now, wherever you are in your process, whether you can take heed to it, that's up to you. That's up to your own path and your own journey where you are emotionally, but I didn't take heed to those things. So until you do, it's going to keep going. But I just feel like, okay, like I said, I, I remember saying like before, like I said, I always said like, okay, when I first moved in, I'm like, forget everybody. I'm not about to be dealing with my parents, but it's like my relationship with my parents has gotten so amazing, you know? And I was able to like write them like this letter and I was able to tell it to them and it was so sweet and it was just like a really <sighs> moment. Um, it was so necessary. It was so healing and freeing, you know, sometimes you may think that the route that you're going or the answers that you think that you need may not really be what you need because the route that I was taking um, wasn't going to get me to where I am. You know how they had this new trend going on talking about soft love. Um, that's what it feels like. That's what self-love really is. It's soft. It's patient. It's slow and steady. Slow and steady. So let's say, because that's what life is, you know, it's all about, like I said, again, it's all about I'm drawing a blank on a word. I just said it. Moderation. Um, too much of anything is not a good thing. Um, you don't want to be so caught up in because the same way that a person who is caught up in brand, you can get the same way caught up in self-love. You can get caught up in the routine of doing certain things to where you can't sit down and say, okay, wait a minute. You don't want to become those rituals or processes or whatever that you're doing. So for me, I'm going to get my nails done, eyebrows done, baths weekly. There's nothing wrong with that, but just know when you have to just take a shift and pause. You know what I'm saying? Shift to something else that's not as costly. Shift to something that doesn't have to do with the outside appearance. Shift to something like meditation, like reading a book. You know, don't get so caught up in those everyday experiences that you can't really understand. Like, hey, I need to be focusing on myself. Not those things that validate that give me validation to say I'm worth something. I'm worth self-love. You know what I'm saying? Tend to yourself. Tend to your temple. You don't want to get confused. Because that's where I got. So, like, when I got COVID. And I'm taking off the wigs, honey. I took off the wigs. And I'm just like, I don't got time. And I don't feel like doing my hair. And I'm like, okay, I can finally just breathe. You know, and I uh, probably put those wigs back on maybe a couple months after that. That was back in... April, May, um, and I just probably put them back on like maybe a month ago, um, but just in that season of my life, I noticed how even though I'm not a big makeup guru or into brands, but I really found identity in getting my nails done and getting my eyebrows done, and it was like when I didn't have that because of financially, 
I felt ugly. <laughs> I didn't feel like myself. You know, you have to be able to step back and say, am I becoming this? <laughs> am I getting stuck in the routine of self-love? Is it really me? You know what I'm saying? When, it, when am I defining love as? What am I? What is my goal here? You know, and I guess wasn't recognizing myself. You know what I'm saying? I kind of got depressed, you know, and then just trying to get my footing back from that. And like I said, all the other health issues that I had, it was just like breaking myself down, you know, and I'm still coming back from it. But I just feel like I'm able to look at myself better. I'm able to be more patient. Like even when I got into my fitness routine or fitness uh, journey, same thing happened, you know, I'm becoming fitness, and there's something, I think sometimes some people might take that the wrong way, but it's just like, balance is key, <laughs> you know, everything, anything of too much, I was going five days a week for two hours a day, why, and all I want to do is tone and tighten, you know, two hours a day does different, and I mean like literally, I would get off, but it was so good. It was that escapism. I don't have to deal with anything that I'm going through. That was my release. That's why some people say, you know, like certain bodybuilders, it may not just be because they want to be the biggest bodybuilders because whenever they go get that workout and they don't have to worry about whatever they have going on at home within themselves, you know, and I feel like I've seen different parts of my mirror self. I feel like I've seen different parts of my shadow side and like coming to peace with it, if that makes sense. Like my overthinking and over imaginative brain, sometimes it really gets the best of me, you know, even to this day. It's like sometimes like I'll be at work and I'm trying to, you know, think of new topics or I'm listening to sermons or I'm listening to a podcast or whatever it is and it's like so loud and I can't turn it off sometimes and that makes me feel like it's really something wrong with me you know but it's just anxiety because you're breaking those roots down you know you're breaking down why you have okay first of all I know that it's parts of each person that because you're you and you're going to protect yourself, you're going to protect your feelings, you're not going to be able to recognize certain things. Like I said, you pulling certain energies toward you or your reactions, your habits, you don't, you're, you're not experiencing you. Okay. We all want to sit out here and act like we're the best person in the world and I'm this and I'm that, but everyone is imperfect, beautifully imperfect. And what if you're your own problem? <laughs> what if you're the, at the end of the day, majority of us are that same factor in every problem that is getting in the way, okay? You're the common denominator. And figuring out what parts of you is that common denominator because you're not all bad. No one is all bad, but figuring out those parts and being able to determine, okay, I need to break that down, get to core, what is going on, what I need to fix is really important. And that can be scary <laughs> because typically those are your defense mechanisms and no one wants to be 100% vulnerable. That's hard. It's really hard. It's something that is necessary because one thing that I've learned is, like I said, we all want some type of relational whatever it is, whether it's just a friend relational. But if you don't figure out those core pieces, you, you will always have some type of hiccup, you know? Some type of, okay, if I say I want to be a better friend, you know what I'm saying? If I know I have a root problem of emotional diarrhea of the mouth <laughs> okay because that is how I get a release then if I don't recognize those things I'm going to keep doing it but then the after fact of it is I feel guilty 
that makes you feel bad about yourself. So then what do you do? You either isolate yourself, which only exacerbates whatever you have going on. You're not coming around people as often. Um, You're not being your true self. That's something I had to deal with as well, you know. Um, it's, It's a process. Everything is a process. And... In the end, I've learned that the journey of self-love is not glitz and glam, (laughs) okay? Getting into therapy is just like, okay, it's cool. I got a cool talk, buddy. But then when you start really doing that work and it really starts seeping in and you start thinking about certain things that you're talking about, really start analyzing things, it's like, (laughs) child, I didn't know I was like, (laughs) I didn't know it was like that. You like that in your head? Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-mm. That's that's me. That's me. Like, that's really me. But being able to identify those things in yourself is a beautiful thing. Because then you can limit certain experiences that you don't want. Only you know you at the end of the day. You know how to control what comes out your mouth. You know... When you about to be saying too much, you know nobody else can stop you from being you. <laughs> you know? So it's best to go out there and make sure that you're getting the proper tools. I cannot stress that enough. Getting the proper tools. You are making sure you're not cloning other people's experiences. That like you are actually gleaning from whatever they have to educate you on and apply it in the correct way um don't get caught up in another person's process get caught up in up another person's story plot um your life is not going to be cookie cutter just like how theirs is okay that's the hard part is that no matter what another person says you still have to make your own decision at the end of the day. And whether you believe that you're making your own decision or not, whether or not you believe that you're actually going based off certain principles, you do know that you have to know that you're making that decision. It's not just because you heard what someone else said, you identified with it. So it gets to make sure that it's that you're okay to say, mm, this was really me. This was really me making this decision. Or I'm just trying to replicate what I saw you have to be able to determine what way your life is going so this is just such a good episode for me to like unpack myself and just understand that the journey is ever changing okay it's ever changing nothing ever stays the same Drake said it and embrace it embrace your journey embrace the downfalls of it embrace the heartwarming moments of it embrace what it brings embrace what it takes away just know that building yourself up reparenting yourself and redefining yourself and it's all for your greater good and there's nothing wrong with that so i'll see you in the next episode thank you so much for tuning into this episode in season three thank you for getting real in the cave